Sure, as he said in the locker room, maybe guys are gonna think that you have a big dick, but in the bedroom, it's actually gonna negatively affect your performance and it's not gonna improve the size of your dick. It's just gonna make it look better. How's it going, boys? In today's video, we're gonna be reviewing Sterling Cooper. So Sterling Cooper is actually a YouTuber. He's a porn star, actually, and a former male companion, as he likes to say it. So he's a former male prostitute, basically. And he has a really cool YouTube channel that I really enjoy watching, has very cool videos that I pretty much agree with most of them. But something very interesting about Sterling Cooper is that he actually, first of all, he went into porn having, I would say an average dick. So he was a little bit less than six inches and he has photos of his dick on his website. So sterlingcooper.com backslash proof. But he went into porn having an average dick. I don't know how the hell he did that. But the most interesting part is he actually managed to grow his dick by a little bit over an inch and he has a before and after photos, again, on the same page that I just mentioned. Now, the thing about his results is that he doesn't reveal how he's gotten his results, mostly because he's selling a mini course, teaching guys how to grow their dick by you know, an inch or whatever. But I managed to find one of his videos where he's like uh, doing a podcast with some other dude that I don't know his name, Rich Cooper. And uh, in the video, he's actually mentioning a couple of ways that he admittedly does, and he uses those couple of methods to grow his dick. And I'm gonna be taking a look at the video. The video is kind of a bit long, so there's no point in watching the whole thing, but, uh, so he's revealing a couple of methods. And you need to mention here is that when you talk to women, about penis size. What you'll notice, and I've seen this time and time again, because you know, the girls in my industry talk about this a lot, whenever it refers to a big penis, they always refer, they're referring to the girth, not the length. Okay, so he's saying a really cool point here that I 100% agree with, not only me, but also pretty much any girl that I talk to, is the guys are obsessed with the length of their dick. But what you have to understand is most women do not have space inside for like a long dick. And in fact, if your dick is like a bit too long, it can be very uncomfortable for them. I know that a lot of you bastards enjoy being uncomfortable with girls and enjoying seeing a girl a little bit uncomfortable with your massive junk. But the thing is that in fact, they're not gonna enjoy it. So if you're trying to maximize the pleasure that girls get from your dick, Focusing on just the length is gonna be like a wrong approach in my opinion. And a lot of the guys are writing me and they have like eight inches and they're trying to make their dick bigger. At eight inches, you're already uncomfortable for 90% of the girls. So instead of focusing on growing the length, you should also focus on growing the girth. Because remember, hitting the pelvics of any woman is gonna be very uncomfortable. It's not a point where she gets pleasure from. She gets pleasure from basically the entrance of the pussy and the G-spot, and the pelvis is not where they usually get the pleasure from. Guys, when they hear, when, when guys talk about having a big wang, they're talking about the length. But when women talk about it, they're actually talking about the girth, because that's what they feel. Because they, they want that sensation of being filled up, right? So the beautiful thing with the jelking exercise is that you can, you can tailor it to work lengthwise or girthwise, depending upon the amount of blood that is already in your shaft. So you can have, typically like if you go, say say at a full erection, you're at like 100% blood flow in your penis, right? If you want to work on lengthening the shaft, then you should start jelking it around about like 30 to 40% blood flow. If you want to work on the girth, however, you can go about the range of about 60 to 70, 80% blood flow, and then you're going to start focusing more on increasing the girth of the actual shaft. Okay, so he's talking about increasing the girth using jelking exercises. That's something that I don't really have much experience with, mainly because I don't really know about it too much. So I haven't really studied the subject and the reason why, because there's not so many reliable sources online that I can trust and follow. 
Uh, however, apparently he's actually getting really good results from Gel King. According to the video and the rest of the video, he's actually doing Gel King exercises pretty much every morning. And for him, that's a means to increase the girth. So I might actually check out his exercises and try to do them myself. However, the second point, so he's giving actually two methods to increase the penis size. And the second method is manual stretching. And by manual stretching, he's referring to actually holding your dick with your hand and actually stretching it. Now, that's something that you can do, but stretching like for an hour, like holding your dick for an hour and just trying to stretch it, is gonna be, you know, kind of challenging and comfortable because you get to be holding it all the time. So the ideal method, at least for me, is using a penis extender the way I did it. So I also gained an inch just like him and I didn't do any jelking exercises. I actually just did uh, stretching with a penis master penis extender. I actually used the belt most of the time. I stretched with the belt. I tied under my knee and stretched with it between two to four hours per day. But the methods that he's mentioning are actually pretty similar. So he just added jelking. Again, I don't know what he's teaching in his mini course, how to increase your dick, but I can bet money that it's probably a combination of those two, basically jelking and maybe stretching with a device or with your hand. Uh, there's not that much more to it. Like I'm sure he's not telling you in the course to go get a surgery or do something that might harm your dick. So you can actually quite easily tailor your, your jelking exercises depending upon your specific goals. And obviously is there can, like a, is there like a best time of day to do this? Like when you're in the shower, when you're done having sex, you know, when you're masturbating? Like, yeah. I wouldn't do it free, but don't do it before sex because you'll sort of wear out your junk and you'll wear, you're, 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 you're sort of causing, mi remember you're causing micro tears basically mm -hmm. in the, the, the blood vessels and the cells of the penile shaft. So that's something that I totally agree with. From the times that I actually did jelking myself, I felt that my erection was weaker right after. Now, what he's saying is you should do the gel king early in the morning so that you can give time for your dick to actually rest in case you're gonna have sexual intercourse in the evening. You don't want your dick to actually be sore or to not perform properly. So it's just like, you know, if you're going not that different, not that dissimilar to if you're, you know, doing a bicep curl or if I'm doing a tricep, tricep extension in the gym and then I go play basketball, my jump shot's gonna be off, right? Yeah. So it's immediately afterwards you want to give it some time to sort of refresh and, and heal up got it so i like to do it first thing in the morning and get it out of the way then it's that's sort of my morning routine part of my morning routine involves a bunch of these exercises and things i talk about in my book so then bang it's done my shaft can rest for the day and then if i have a lady friend over that night then i'm good to go mm -hmm. so I've got my, my my appendage has the day to relax and okay so tip number one learn what jelking is there's 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 probably lots of stuff on the internet that explains the movement because it's not it's not new it's not like sterling invented this i mean you should be able to find this stuff for free i know that you've got all the details in your course and in your book as well and you know while we're talking about it let me just drop it for you guys there it's like an it's like i, think, I believe it came from the middle east actually it's like a really yeah it's a middle eastern technique I mean, it's nothing more than a muscle. Like, you know, they call it a boner, but there's no bones in there. It's just, it's just straight up, you know, like muscle tissue based. So uh, it's actually not quite accurate. It's not really muscle tissue. It is like a skin tissue and other things. It's definitely not a muscle, but whatever. But, yeah. So this is- All right, so, so we got jogging, so what's next? First thing you could, so the first thing you could do, you could do a jogging. The second free exercise I'm gonna give you guys right now is actually manual stretching. So, uh, this is a technique that was, there's a, there's a old, uh, um, what are they called? Like a, not a Broadway show, but a stage show called Puppetry of the Penis. Oh yeah. And, and these guys do all kinds of funny like tricks with their, with their wang and they make the wrist watch and they make, the, make it look like an Eiffel Tower and all kinds of funny stuff. They actually have weights that you can hang off your pen. So those guys, those guys just to, do, to, to get it flexible enough for them to do their show. Mm. You can do this without weights. You can do this just by manually stretching it. So basically, if you, where's my hand? So that's, so basically what you want to do, let's pretend this microphone is my wang for a second. If, uh, can you still hear me? Yes, excellent. If this is say the front part here, say like the glands of your, of your shaft, you can grip like this, and then you can start to pull. 
you grip, so you're gripping behind the base of the glands. You don't, the, the important thing is the glands is like a really the most sensitive part of your dick, so you don't want to be like doing any stretching you or don't want to be breaking anything. You're saying you don't want to be doing anything nasty there, but you grip behind it, then you can pull in various directions, right? And you can pull and you can hold at tension. And what you're doing with this is you're you're stretching the ligaments that attach your shaft to your pubic bone. Okay, so that is something that is really cool and that's something that I do myself, not exactly the way he's describing it. I actually show it on my OnlyFans, the, the way I do it. Link is gonna be in the description of this video, but the way I do it is this. I will use the Pini Master vacuum chamber. I'll put the head of my penis in it, so it's gonna be holding the head of my penis really tightly, and then I can use that. I can just hold on to that plastic and then just stretch my dick right and left you know, up and down. Uh, you can also do it while attaching the belt that comes with the Pini Master, so it's easier for you to hold it. And then you can do the stretching manually, but you can also basically just attach that belt under your knee and let the force on the belt stretch your dick. And that, uh, that causes it to hang basically further away from your body and increases your total erect length. Oh, can you talk oh. about that penis extension surgery that's been going yeah. around a lot? Because I've seen you tweet about it, how it doesn't really do anything. It doesn't do crap. Uh, so, Explain that, because I don't want guys going out and paying $10,000 thinking that they're going to extend the size of their dick. And get yes. Yeah, I'm glad you asked that. Um, yeah, so with, with penis enlargement surgery, what they do, so you have, your, you have your shaft, and then there's ligaments which attach it to the pubic bone, right? So in the enlargement surgery, what they do is they just sever the ligaments that attach it your pubic bone instead of, instead of say instead of like it hanging here it hangs there but this doesn't actually change the length of the sh the, the penile shaft itself so when it's flaccid it might it looks like it's a bit longer because the part that comes out of your body is already out of your body because they cut the ligaments that attach it mm -hmm. but when you get erect it's still the exact same size so guys are out there paying ten dollars for enlargement surgery and all they're getting is a better looking wang in the, in the locker room it's making <laughs> no impact on their love life and they spent 10 grand so he's actually saying something that is correct uh doing the penis enlargement surgery is not actually a penis enlargement surgery so what he's saying is the dick is basically connected somehow to your body and in the surgery they basically remove that connection where it's being held and this way it's kind of hanging so it also has a downside of your dick is like not going up this way it's going to go down so you're not going to be able to control it as you would normally do having sex because it's just going to be bigger but it's going to be dangling it's going to be hanging down between your legs so sure as he said in the locker room maybe guys are going to think that you have a big dick but in the bedroom it's actually gonna negatively affect your performance and it's not gonna improve the size of your dick it's just gonna make it look better it's like good lord what a waste of money yeah if you want to impress guys in the change room of the gym okay so that's pretty much the points that he's mentioning in this video and i kind of agree with all the points that he's saying you can definitely grow your dick again that's another proof of like an actual porn star somebody who's on youtube and has gotten results from stretching basically, be it gel king or manual stretching or device stretching. And the proof is on his website, so sterlingcooper.com backslash proof. And the reason I'm doing this video is because a lot of guys keep asking me like, where is the proof for people increasing the size of their dicks? Uh, there is proof, but you really have to dig for it. Unfortunately, YouTube is like not really a big fan of promoting such stuff. That's why my channel is still pretty small. And that's why, again, it was kind of challenging to find Sterling Cooper's uh, videos. But I'm glad that I came across his videos. He's got really cool material, really cool stuff. You guys should probably go subscribe to him if you're into the same stuff as me. And anyways, if you guys like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you leave it a thumbs up. Also, if you're new here, feel free to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on anything in the future. I'm gonna leave links to everything I'm associated with in the description of this video below. I'm gonna see you in the next video. Bye-bye.